Hey, what's up guys and welcome into another Q&A Sunday. This Sunday we have specific questions about telephoto lenses that we're gonna get into right after this. Q intro. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome into the video. I'm David Johnston and on this channel we talk landscape photography. So if you're into going outside and taking your camera with you, taking photos of outdoor things, consider subscribing to this channel. Now in Q&A Sundays, what I like to do is get questions from subscribers and answer them directly so they don't spend all the time searching for things on YouTube and fiddling through minutes and minutes and maybe even hours of footage to get to one answer to their question. I like to get their questions and immediately answer them. So if you have any photography questions for outdoors, comment with those below and I'll get to them next Q&A Sunday. Now in this specific video, we're getting a question from Al Sharp. And Al's one of my subscribers and he asked me specifically which lens he should look at. Now he was talking about telephoto lenses and he was thinking about either going for a 70 to 200 or an 18 to 105. Now the 18 to 105s are like your do it all lens you can shoot multiple multiple things with that lens because it has such a wide range of zoom 70 to 200s are like your classic telephoto look for landscape so let's really break this down on why al should get into a 70 to 200 instead of an 18 to 105. now the 18 to 105 is a great lens don't get me wrong but with the 18 to 105, you're not getting the compression telephoto look like a 70 to 200 will get you. What does that mean exactly? Well, think of it this way. In landscape photography, you really have predominantly two main lens choices. I know you can invest in other types of lenses like a 50 mil, 85, 35, whatever you want to get, but traditionally, you have a wide angle look and a telephoto look. Now your wide angle look is the most common look for landscape photography. It's what a lot of photographers love, myself included, where you can fit a ton into the frame, huge foregrounds and the ability to fit the maximum amount of interest level and awe inspiring imagery into one frame. Telephoto looks are much different. Wide angle looks separate the distances from things and make things in the far distance look smaller than they actually are and distances between those objects look much longer than they are. Telephoto lenses do the exact opposite, making your background imagery larger and compressing distances together. Now the 18 to 105 wouldn't get the same compression as a 70 to 200 and that's why I recommend the 70 to 200 over the 18 to 105 but it's because of the compression. It's because of what you can do with a telephoto lens. And let's really look at the different things you can do with a 70 to 200 or a telephoto lens that you have. Number one, the compressions, those stacking distances together that I just talked about is something that I love to do with my photography. I, I really enjoy going out and shooting landscapes and compressing distances of objects together. You can also get really interesting textures or designs in things when you're using a telephoto lens because you can zoom up on things so much and you can also single out an object. I like to do this with mountains a lot, really singling out one peak or a series of peaks against a solid sky or maybe a sky with a lot of cloud cover or even using the simplicity to photograph sand dunes and really having those accentuated in the photograph and have maybe like some wind blowing across the sand dune. You have some glow of sand as the sun is coming up. These are really good examples of simplicity using the 7200 or a telephoto lens for landscape photography and figuring out what you can do with those creatively. So typically what I do when I go out and take photos is I'll take both my wide angle and my 70 to 200 with me and I'll take my wide angle first and I'll scout compositions to use my wide angle for to create that classic like landscape wide angle look. Then after that's done what I'll do is I'll take my wide angle off because remember distances with wide angles are going to be 
much greater than they are with the 70 to 200. So I'll take my wide angle off and I'll attach my 70 to 200 to go out and start shooting. So what I'll do when the telephoto is attached is basically stand in the same place as I was with my wide angle. And I'll put it up to my eye and I'll kind of just like rotate around and look for anything interesting within the frame that I want to shoot. Once I find those things, I can really single them out create a composition that might be interesting and photograph while I'm just standing there. Usually when I go out shoot, I'll get one location with one wide angle shot and usually like two to three, maybe even four telephoto shots from the same location. It's a great way to maximize a location rather than shooting one wide angle, hiking a long distance, waiting for the change of light and photographing another place. With a wide angle and a telephoto and the compression that the telephoto creates, you can maximize the amount of photographs that you get in a specific location. So like I said, guys, if you enjoyed this video at all, hit that thumbs up button. Comment below with any questions for landscape photography that you might have so that I can answer those for you with the next Q&A Sunday. What I wanna do with these is really make it like a community where people can come and interact with their landscape questions and we can all learn together. If you're into outdoor photography or landscape photography at all, consider subscribing to this channel. You can watch more Q&A Sunday videos with the playlist that's showing on your screen right now, or you can watch the video that YouTube is suggesting that you watch based on your search terms.